Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and right now we're in one of my favorite places in all of Los Angeles. We're down here on the waterfront in San Pedro. Specifically, we're standing in front of Fire Station 112. This is their boathouse, and inside that boathouse is a fire boat. And this is the place, years ago, I spent one of the most exciting days of my life looking at and riding on the old historic fireboat, the Ralph J. Scott. Now what we're gonna do right now is go back in time and relive that adventure, and then we'll come back for an update. And if you love fireboats, the big old fireboats that spray out the water and travel through the harbor, you're gonna have a great adventure. Enjoy. We're here to spend the day with Captain Wigert Good and morning, his crew. Hill. You have invited us to come down and, and spend a day on good old fireboat number two. Now what is the history, what is the distinction that this fireboat holds? Well this fireboat was built uh, during the Roaring Twenties when the Coliseum and the City Hall and the Federal Building and everything was under construction downtown. It's the oldest uh, continuous in-service fireboat in the United States. In the entire country? Yes, sir. So this is a historical landmark? It is a registered historical landmark with both the state of California and uh, the federal government. All right, let's take a look at it. You've got this set up here with all of these wonderful old pictures and the windows here for tourists to actually come up here when they're visiting, I guess, the Maritime Museum or just want to come down here look at the history of the fireboat, and then look in at the fireboat itself. Yes, indeed. Uh, this is a pictorial history from the beginning of the fireboat uh, up to the uh, most modern day. Some of the old photographs of some of the historical fires, explosions, and incidents that we've had in the harbor. And you can kind of peek in and get an idea there's the fireboat right there. Yes, indeed. The architect designed this uh, knowing the interest that's created worldwide. Uh, he's got these windows just at the proper angle so that the glare is reduced and people can come in any time and see uh, the fireboat. But you've got a special door you're going to take us in yes. to give us a real good view of the fireboat. Well, we're going to take you in and show you one of the most magnificent pieces of firefighting apparatus uh, in the United States today. Boy, it is, it makes a good first impression, doesn't it? <laughs> well, uh, I'm impressed every morning I come to work. It's, uh, it's uh, if you will, a love affair with a piece of equipment, but uh, we maintain it uh, uh, over the years it's been maintained. We've upgraded it from gasoline engines to diesel engines. We've upgraded the, uh, the power that it has to uh, perform its, its designed function and that's to give us copious amounts of water uh, for any, any emergency that may, we may encounter in L.A. Harbor. Wow, it is a big boat too, isn't it? Yes, it's, uh, it's a 100 footer, uh, it's 18 foot wide beam, and uh, it draws about nine foot of water. And uh, we have the tower on top uh, where we can elevate up to uh, uh, dock level and on, on deck aboard ship if we have a fire or have to supply water up there. Wow, and this is its home. Now this is a new structure. I've seen pictures of the old structure yes. and it was a beaut. Yes, it was uh, marvelous, uh, but due to harbor expansion, uh, that uh, particular building uh, was replaced by this one. Howdy fellas. Hi, How you doing? Good. We're ready for a big day how on the you fireboat. How you doing? Good to see you. Hi, how are you? Ah, they're getting Good to work now. Oh, yeah. Get on down there and get okay. ready. We're ready. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. Howdy. Can we just go on down, Captain? OK, come on, Louie. They're getting it all revved up and ready for us. What do we do, just jump on board? Yep, just watch your step. 
Go hook your foot. We take, our, uh, we take our turnout gear with us whenever we go aboard. Uh, we are available for response uh, with you with us, so uh, maybe we'll pick up something. So you got to be ready. And look over there, Louie. Look at this huge tanker coming in. Wow. This is exciting. Okay, we are moving. We're off. Yes, sir. We're underway. Uh, as you can see the traffic out here, we've got a bow watch up there, which we require uh, whenever we uh, come this in. This guy's the bow watch? Yes, sir. Now, what are you looking for out here? Well, for traffic coming up and down the channel, if it's too close for us to be able to maneuver into the channel, we have to wait until the traffic clears. Well, do you have a, like a siren? What if it was an emergency and you had to, do you get preference over, over another ship that's already coming down the harbor? Well, it depends on the size of the ship. <laughs> If it's if it's a tanker or if it's like a container ship like this one's just coming through, of course we're not. They can't give way for us. Yeah, they can't stop in but time. But if it's small traffic like we've got coming up here, this little bass boat, then then of course we can sound our siren. We've yeah. got our uh, our lights to go with it. So this is a pretty important thing you're doing right out here. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, we also use a, a stern watch under certain conditions, uh, along with the bow watch. In foggy conditions, we uh, we use our radar, but we also use uh, bow watches and stern watches just because traffic is so heavy up and down the channel. Yeah. So there's something for everybody to do at different stages of being, of, well, there's the firehouse over there. This thing moves pretty quickly, too. Yes, sir, this, uh, this boat will uh, move at 19 knots if we have to. What are we going now? We're uh, required to stay under five miles an hour in the inner channel okay, of the harbor. So we're just barely moving right now. Yes, we, the idea, of course, is we don't want to throw up. Though notice the tug over here. He's not throwing up a wake, and the big ships coming in are, aren't throwing up a wake, and you can see why. Obviously, we don't want to disturb the uh, private craft as well as the loading and offloading operations of container vessels. There is the, look over here, Louie, there's the Maritime Museum. We're going right by it now. I've never seen it from the water before. You really do get an interesting view of what's going on the, from uh, being out here. It's the old ferry building. It used to uh, go terminate, but where that gantry is right over there, we had the ferry going across the Terminal Island Ferry for the cannery workers, mm -hmm. and uh, I've used it many, many times. Now, what are we doing? Uh, we're What's going next. We're going We're out. ready for some excitement. Uh, we're, go <laughs> <laughs> we're going out right now. We've uh, just had some welding work done on the main system uh, from our fire pumps to our turrets. Uh, we had uh, a leaker down there that we call it, and we just done some welding below decks. And so, what we're going to do is go out and turret by turret. Uh, we're going to go ahead and test these and make sure that it's watertight. Oh, so we're going to get to see some water spurt now. Yes, sir, you sure will. Good. Can we go talk to some of these guys yeah, back go. here? What's... So I'll let you talk to the uh, pilot up here. I'll let you talk to Paul Hillary. He's the pilot uh, in charge of boat two today. Okay, now we're standing here with the first mate and explain all of this to us, what you're doing here today. Well, we're just going down the main channel, heading south, which would be towards Catalina at this point. And uh, all this here is, uh, we have three drive engines on this boat. There's a center screw that has the rudder behind it and two uh -huh. wing engines. Uh -huh. And uh, the rest of this, we have thrusters, underwater thrusters, uh, 2,000 GPM that we can use to direct the boat in a situation where we need that much power. And also uh, <coughs> up here, we've got our under wharf nozzles that we use for wharf fires if we have to put on uh, a large amount of water, we have the ability to put 3,000 GPM out from these as so, well as our rest So do you control the nozzles from here as well as the boat itself? I control the underwarf nozzles up here. Uh, the rest of, every, uh, of our other nozzles are controlled from the deck. Now is this, uh, this isn't original to the boat. It's been modernized a lot over oh, the yeah, years. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it was outfitted in 69, went through a total conversion, and uh, we used to have a real old pilot's wheel. It used to have a big wooden wheel up here. Really? And, uh, at one time there were 22 members on the boat because everything was operated by hand and now we're down to eight guys and everything's on hydraulic controls. wonder what it was like back in the old days. Do you ever hear stories from old firefighters who oh, yeah. come back? And lot, you know, all the visitors we get, we have a lot of people that, uh, that worked on this boat years ago through the war and uh, they tell what it was like 
operating on the boat then, and they heard stories before uh, before they showed up too. So there's quite a long history that goes back with some of the people we have visit. So do you really get a sense of being part of a, a very proud fireboat tradition? I personally am very proud. I love working on this boat. The fact that it was built in 25 and uh, we keep it up fairly well and hopefully get a full century out of it and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. And someday you'll be coming back as an old timer telling all so. the <laughs> telling all the young firefighters I hope so. your stories of working in the 90s. Yeah, it would be great. Back I, in the 90s. I, I hope I can work that out. <laughs> this is part of our potential down here. We've got the fishing fleet down here. We've got the, the fishing uh, uh, boats that uh, they travel all over the world, South America. And they come back in here and they refueling. There's potential here uh, that uh, we have for fuel leaks and we've been on board. We've had pump outs and we've had injuries on board. But uh, So when you look at these fishing boats or any other boat in the harbor, you're always looking for potential problems that you might have to be a part of the solution of. One leaker in that fishing boat dock back there can destroy the whole fishing fleet that's tied up in there, so we've got to jump right on it. What if do you we mean one leaker? Well, that means if he has a fuel leak of some sort, and then we have a fuel dock right there, uh, that ah. if we get fuel into the water and it ignites and uh, so forth, you can see the most of them, many of them are wooden hull, still wooden Look hull. Look at all this. This, this is, is the gas tech. and oil. This, and these oh are what boy. we call our exotics here at the uh, Gatex location because uh, they have uh, commodities and product in there. This is where we had a tremendous fire back here where we had the tank that exploded and skyrocketed into the air. This was part of the uh, Gatex. Uh, and look, okay, it goes right. all the way down here, too. I mean, there's a lot of and potential you, exactly. for disaster. We deal in potential here. And any one of these, uh, we could have a problem with it. You can see what happens. We're right at the mouth of Los Angeles Harbor right now. And uh, if something were to happen here, we'd have to close the harbor down, and then commerce would be interrupted. So it's uh, on our best uh, a behavior to get out here as quickly as we can and try to curtail the emergency. All right, we're going down into the engine room. You're going to stay up here and I'm going to go down yes, and meet please. the guy down there. Yes, indeed. Now, what is all of this? Well, these are our four main pumps out of the six up here. It's not quite as noisy here because they're not running right now. The thing we have running are the three drive engines that operate all the propellers, and that's the only thing running other than one generator right now. So it's a little quieter up here, but when we really get going and start pumping, it's unbearable down here. So these engines are all for the pumps themselves, the firefighting pump. Correct. Each engine goes to one pump. That's a dedicated engine to a dedicated pump. Look at this. You got this thing cleaned and shined up, too, don't you? Uh, that gets The brass gets cleaned every month for our inspection, yes. Really? These pumps were made for this fire, fire boat for our specifications and the cast. You can see that happens to be pump number four. Uh -huh. each, each pump has a number on it, cast in the, in the top. Uh -huh. They're a bronze casting with a bronze impeller. They put in when the boat was built, and they haven't been taken apart. They're still operating. Full of salt since, water. Since when? 1925. You mean these are the original pumps? These are the original pumps. Wow. Built to last. Good. Right. And when the pumps are going, you can't, we wouldn't even be able to hear each no, other. Not at all. Not at all. It's unbearable. Well, this is the cleanest engine room I have ever been in in my life. Well, thank you. We do a little bit of maintenance here. And who is this fella down this is here? The other engineer, Bobby Webb. We have two engineers on duty all the time. If we're pumping, one of us has to stay in the control room. And maybe when we go through there, you see all how we control it. Let's take a look. So he's actually come on through here. You actually uh, run the pumps, control yeah. the pumps from down here. Right. All of them are controlled from in here. Uh, with this quiet room, we can talk back and forth to each other. You can well imagine all the noise. You can't hear anything otherwise. They put this in in 69, makes it much easier to communicate with the pilot house and with each other while we're down here. So each one of these is for one of the nozzles, one of the... Uh, one, of, one of the pump engines. Here. Yeah. 
There's four main pumps there and two back here. These are the four for the forward, and then the other two are these here. So you spend all your time down here, you don't ever get to see the fire. That's right, we never get to see the displays or anything like that, we're down below. We're sort of stuck. Well, you're doing a good job, even if you don't get to get up on deck very often. That's what we like to say anyway. <laughs> We're probably the most important part of this thing. Without us, uh, there wouldn't be any fire put out, with her. We'll be sure and get that word out to everybody. <laughs> the most important guys on the whole fireboat, right here. That's it, without a doubt. Okay, you'll now brought you out on deck. This part of our testing procedure, and uh, we'll be running through each one of our nozzles here one at a time, and. Uh, uh, Dan McElhaney is our uh, Here's the guy. on deck mate today. You're the head guy out yes, here. Yes, I am. All right, How explain to us. Can we get the, the thing fired sure, up? Sure, sure. Paul, go ahead and uh, go ahead. Guys. You guys can open up. So what's happening here? Okay, let me t explain to you. This is the bow turret. Puts out oh, about wow. 3,000 GPMs. This one here. Let's put out about 750 GPM. Excuse me. A minute. Oh, look. Ha! There's water everywhere. Yeah, there's water. There's 3,000 here on this one I'm at. And those are the hydraulic operated valves. This is the direction. You can watch the direction of it now. I'll move it to the port side. Oh. And then we have whoa. your uh, vertical. And breach. you're controlling that right here. That's correct. That's it. And we have the valve to open it and close it's right down here. And then you've got three right. on each side. Right. We've got, we're only operating four or two on each side right now. And then down here, Yule, you might want to take a look at this. This is an under wharf nozzle, and they use that for fighting wharf fires underneath. And he could, Paul, the operator today, he can maneuver that from inside the wheelhouse. He might have showed that to you earlier. So you go up next to a wharf that's on fire, and it gets up underneath it. Exactly. And he could make that in a spray pattern or in a straight stream like it is now. Now, how does this compare with what a regular fire truck can do? This. Uh, a regular fire truck puts out about 1,500 gallons a minute, and this last test last year it was 18,500 GPMs. Uh, last year it was tested at. Wait a minute. A fire truck puts out 1,500 right. gallons a right. minute. Uh, what, yeah, it's about 15. This puts out 18,000. 18,600. Right. Yeah, Three. it's a lot. Also, we carry a complement of hoses right down here in the hose reels. This. Yeah. Is and this is all water just coming up out of the ocean right exactly. now. Exactly. We got engineers down below pumping the pressures, what Paul calls for, and uh, that's it. And can you up, we have other turrets throughout the boat. Can you move this around a little bit more sure. for us? Sure. I'll neat. bring it up right now. Paul, going up. There you go. Wow, that, that's amazing. Yeah, that's a lot of water. That's 3,000 gallons a minute at 150 PSI. This and also, underneath the water, about a foot below the water line, we have thrusters. It's a 1,000 GPM tip, and that's used for keeping the boat in position while we're pumping large quantities of water. They're called thrusters. So he might be using them now on the stern uh, to keep the boat in position. OK, we're cranking it up. What are you doing? You're opening up the open up the nozzle? Yeah, the hydraulic shutoff for this one isn't working properly right now, so we've got Whoa! Okay, there we go. Boy, that sounded like it was gonna Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on there. It has to fill the system, come up through the barrel. These are specially designed to kind of rifle the water. It brings it around and makes it so you get the, the best trajectory out of the nozzle and that makes a good firefighting hose or firefighting. This is kind of a puny squirt here. We haven't raised the pressure yet. This is just at an idle. Oh, here it comes. We're gonna, what are we gonna pump at 150? We're gonna pump at 100 pounds only on this. This just kind of shows you what we can do. Can you put it up a little so we can yes, see Yes, there it? again, just as like the forward turrets, we're pumping about 3,000 3, gallons per minute with this one. And I'm operating it here with this little neural knob in my left hand. I can put it wherever you want. Left, wow. right, real high, real low. How many fire boats do we have in Los Angeles? We've got five. five. We have yes we do. But this is the premier fire boat. This, this is, is the uh, This is uh, the big daddy of the fleet. Yes it is. And it was the first one built and uh, of this size. 
and uh, all steel construction. If you noticed uh, the rivets on the side of the boat, there aren't anything, there isn't anything welded on this hull. It's all put together with wrought iron and rivets. Now what are you doing? You're telling old fireboat stories over oh, here? Just coming up to get some fresh air. That's right, you're supposed to be been, down and... Been down there the whole time. You're up here looking around the fireboat. <laughs> <laughs> back down in there, back down in there. <laughs> Do y'all switch around? Do y'all switch around so that sometimes you're down in the engine room too, or? No, the engineer's domain is down there. They, they maintain the engines, they do the oil changes, they do the startups for the boat, virtually all the maintenance, including rattling and cleaning rust and painting again yeah. on the keel. And but, how do you all get along with the other members of the fire department, the ones, the regular members of the fire department? The regular members of the well, fire no, department. No, no, I didn't mean it that way. I'm deeply you hurt. Think, <laughs> you think they're a little envious of us? Yeah. Well, most of us have uh, have done our time on where they're working right now, and so... Uh, on uh, regular fire trucks? Yes, sir, on fire trucks on land. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the, we've, we've, most of us have done all that, and... Uh, Possibly a little seniority or a special application like these guys are certified divers have allowed us to come down here and work at this assignment. Do you have to be comfortable on the water? What if you tend to get seasick or have problems on boats? If you tend to get seasick, then you just get seasick. I don't think it would deter anybody from trying to get an assignment down here. So this is considered primo duty for oh, a firefighter? Absolutely. And getting back to that seasick business, there's only been a couple of instances where we've been in water rough enough to really cause us to get seasick, and luckily none of us did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. if somebody got seasick, y'all yeah. would never let them forget it, would you? No, we, we would try and bring it up every time that we could. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have almost reached the end of today's adventure. There's the firehouse right here, and we're getting ready for a big moment, aren't we? Uh, this is the test for Paul. We're going to find out how good he is at backing this boat in the slip. So he's got to back it in. He's got to back it in. Well, he'll get it in there. It's just we give him a, a grade, what he does. Uh -huh. And his best shot is to get it in without touching either side of the boat and backing it straight in the slip. And that's called a, a no touchy. A no touchy. A no touchy. So the pressure is on him today for a no touchy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no pressure. He can do it. Just no problem. He well, can do it easy. this has been an interesting day. Uh, thank you all very much for giving us the... No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> giving us the tour. This has been a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We've still got a finale. You and I are going to go up on shore for the, for the big grand finale. There's Paul in there now uh, going through... You feeling any pressure? No pressure. No pressure. And, of course, we will have the cameras rolling to make sure that it's a no-touchy as we back in. It better be a good one. <laughs> but it's been a good day, and I think hopefully all of us, uh, everybody watching today, I know I have learned a lot about the good job that you all are doing from day to day. It's not as high profile as a lot of, uh, I mean, you know, you don't see the fire truck going down the street every day like you do here. Uh, with the fire boat, but it's just as important, isn't it? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We'll, we can supply 12 of those fire engines up there if they need the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, any other Watch your ear. emergency that comes down, uh, hopefully we'll be able to handle it with what we've got here. What are you doing? You're going to blow the horn, so you better oh, okay. hold your ears. Okay. <laughs> That's it? That, 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 <laughs> that's it? That's a signal. That's a maritime signal that we have to use when we approach quarters to let them know we're on our way back. I got you. <laughs> Turn the stove on. We're ready to eat. <laughs> well, that's right. You've invited us for lunch today as well. You betcha. And look, there's some. There's a, a dad and his kids. That, that's an interesting thing, Huel, is uh, I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, but we one of the things that we do is, is we give uh, tours of the fireboat and the station to, oh gosh, cap what, a couple of thousand kids a year, I would think. LA uh, Unified School District were on their on their list of tours, so uh, if you ever talk to any of the kids and they say, have you ever visited the Ralph J. Scott, well, they've probably been here and seen us. Oh, we're going to put the number up on the screen for people to, <laughs> they're all going to be coming down oh, here for the tour. Well, that's okay, because uh, we're proud of the, of the old fireboat. She's been here a long time. 
uh, and we're proud to tell you all about it, and, and we're proud to be here. That's, that's what I can say. All right, there he goes. He says there's not much pressure on him, no but pressure. there is. No pressure. Look at that. Look at that. Man of steel. He is a man of steel. Not a bit of pressure. This is just like the Super Bowl. No pressure at all. Okay, right now the pilot's backing into our quarters, and the, with the vessel being 100 foot long, he's got to account for the wind and the current and be able to, to maintain control of the boat. Uh, he has three propellers which to use, but uh, because of all the practice that we get, they're able to do that real easy. Uh, so far right now, he's doing a really good job. He's, he's backing in smooth, smooth and slow, and it's just there's going to be a perfect job, I think. Uh, this is almost going to be a no touchy as, as of right now. We'll see how it ends up. We better move out of the way. We'll get, get run over here. Uh oh. Close. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. He's going to save it. Watch this. He's going to save it. Look at that. Kick the stern out. Beautiful. That was an excellent back in, Paul. <laughs> he did it. He did it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It was a piece of cake. <laughs> Our job here is uh, we're, we're given the, uh, the charter of fire protection and to serve the public down here, and that's what we do in many different ways. Well, time has passed, and the beautiful boathouse for fire station number 112 here in San Pedro is still here. The Ralph J. Scott is still here. Only catch is the Ralph J. Scott is not inside the boathouse. She's sitting out here in the middle of a deserted parking lot, just kind of sitting up over the asphalt. And fellas, this is kind of strange to see this beautiful boat, which is on the, well, it's a National Historic Landmark, right, Bill? That's, that's correct. To see it sitting up like this, Frank, you know about this boat. Why is it here in the parking lot and not out in the water? Well, it served 77 continuous years, and I think the fire department said, you know what, we better design and get a new boat, and which they did. And oh. the new boat is in the boathouse today. And the old one is out here. Ralph J. Scott's on, on the dock. Now, I had heard that she was beginning to leak or they were afraid that she might sink or some problem like that. Actually, yes. We had a marine survey done on the boat and we did find that the hull had many weak spots. As a matter of fact, it did spring a leak uh, while it was in the boatyard. Bill Dawquist was there, fortunately, at the time it sprung the leak. Wow, what'd you do? How'd you just plug the leak with a cork or uh, something? You no, know, I found a paintbrush with a tapered handle on it and it fit perfectly You're in a half kidding. inch hole. No. <laughs> you were the pilot on the Ralph J. Scott for 16 years, so I know that when you look at her, it's got to make your heart pound a little faster just being this close to her. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I loved every minute of serving on that boat. I couldn't wait to get to work in the morning. And it's sad to see it come uh, to the status in uh, presently. Uh, but its time had come, and uh, it had a lot of problems that had to be dealt with, and uh, that, that's what we'll have to do. Well, uh, it, hopefully this story is going to have a happy ending, but right now, uh, if she can't be in the water, at least she looks like she's uh, safe up here. She's guarded. There's a fence around her. You've kind of sealed her up, and, and she's sitting there waiting for her fate, right? And that's correct. And uh, as the time goes on, why well, we'll make it better than it is right now. And uh, that's, that's the next thing, to, the next challenge we're going to <laughs> the have. The next chapter in the Ralph J. That's Scott's true. life. That's the truth. How did she get, because she was right down here in the water for a long time. That's right. How did she get from the water up here to the parking lot? I think it was one of the most amazing feats of engineering that I ever saw. They brought a big, the port helped us do this whole project, the Port of L.A., brought this big uh, crane on a barge over. It must have been 200 feet high, huge crane. The boat weighs almost 200 tons, so you need a big crane. They floated the boat over next to the crane, 
uh, had this platform sitting in, in, in these straps on this huge cable. Put the boat gently on the platform. Divers went down and put these shims in it, got it all ready to go, and then they raised it up, up onto the dock and onto a trailer with 100 wheels on it, I think. Wow. With a tractor on it to pull it over, and they pulled it over right to this spot. It was just totally amazing, absolutely wow. amazing. Wow, you don't usually see something you that don't. big. When did this happen? Uh, in, uh, in 2004, it was taken out of the water. So she's been sitting up here a couple of years. Can we walk over and, well, I know we can because we, we want to go up and see her. Get actually, we can actually get on her, yes, can't we, can. we? Sure we can. All right, let's get over there because I want to get, I feel like I'm visiting an old friend. You are. Going back to the Ralph J. Scott. You are. Now, in order to get up on the Ralph J. Scott's deck, we had to fix this ladder up here to get up to the deck. And in order to do that, we called into action some firefighters. Actually, you all are not connected with this particular firehouse here in San Pedro, no, are you? We're from uh, Fire Station 48, which is over on 16th and Grand. And Down the street. Right. So San what Pedro. did they do? Call you up and say they needed a ladder? And Yes, sir, and we brought them. All we right. had two 24 foot straights for you. Okay, now has anybody, even though you're not connected, weren't connected with the boat, did any of you ever serve on the boat or go out on the boat or have any experiences on the boat? Just worked one overtime day. That was it? That's about it, yes, sir. Anything eventful happened that uh, day? Well, I, I don't know, Mike. He has an event he would like to tell you about. Uh, well, this is back. Uh, I was uh, assigned actually as a firefighter at 48, so I'm back at 48 so as an engineer now. But uh, I believe this is 1982. Uh, Ralph J. Scott went out to escort the USS New Jersey back in port that I believe was uh, over at the uh, in the Persian Gulf area had been gone for a year and uh, so we went out to the uh, breakwater area it was all foggy that morning and uh, as soon as uh, that the, the bow perched through the uh, the fog you see all these uh, Navy and Marine wow. officers in uh, dress uniform uh, along the edges of the ship it was pretty impressive what was it like for you being on this this old fireboat I, you know, with the history of this, and uh, you know, I, uh, Bill Dahlquist was still working at the time. Uh, uh, listened to some of the stories he had to say, and uh, just being on it was a bit of history. Yeah, because fellas, I think that's part of it. This has, over the years, developed its own lore, its own sense of history, has it? Yeah, you can imagine how many uh, firefighters worked on that boat since 1925 when it was commissioned and launched. Yeah, many, many generations actually. That's absolutely true. It uh, it's, gets to be a part of you. It, that's the way it is with boats, isn't it? We we, we love boats, and uh, we certainly love this one for a long time. All right. Well, thanks to these fellows right here, we've got the ladders available to go up on top and take a take a look. Anybody want to go up with us, or do you all want to just stay down here and well, supervise, or what do you want to do? You can go up there first, and if well. Make sure you get up there safely. You'll catch us if we fall. That's what well, you were I didn't about to say. say. That. I said you can get up there first. <laughs> Boy, where we're going? How high up are we? It's really up there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, they are coming up. Boy, this really gives you an idea of. Boy, this feels good being back up here. It does. It does. How long has it been since you've been up on her like this? Well, for me, it's been several months. Bill's been on the deck a few times, and we're, we're actually doing our surveys to see how we're going to start working on the boat. You've got a pigeon guard up here because you don't want the birds That's right. perching up there. And I see it looks to me like rust, big chips of rust all down here. So she's not really holding up very well out here in the elements, is she? No, it, it takes a beating. Uh, sun, rain, and all the rest of it that goes on. We've been lucky for the birds. Uh, if we'd have been uh, 300 feet that way, we'd probably had seagulls all over this thing. So the gulls aren't adventuresome enough to just come this far? The most surprising thing about our move for me was that we moved just that distance, and before that, they were all over this boat. Yeah. It's like they, they don't believe it that it could be over here. Wow, this is something, and it looks very rusty up there on the tower. Yes. There is. There's a lot of rust, but then it's always been that way. Uh, actually, we used to have a motto that uh, rust office no lay morphosis. 
Uh, I don't think that's Latin, but it would be Rust Never Sleeps. <laughs> and so our job was Rust, uh, you know, forever. Yeah, well, this yeah. boat took a lot of upkeep. I remember when I was on her before, there was a lot of brass to polish. There was. That's right. We had a day, uh, I think it was Thursday, was brass day, and then the other six days you had brass to polish. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> it, it really was a, a, a big endeavor. We finally, as the crew size was cut down, we finally started painting some of those fittings and that was really going against tradition but we got away with it down here in the harbor many of those brass pieces that he's talking about we put away uh, for future use and oh, display. So you've already taken a lot yes. of the brass out of the yeah. inside of the boat. Uh, the big nozzle tips they're they're off right now they were on there <sighs> many things oh, are, have story. been taken off. Okay we're on the main deck walking toward the bow of the boat Boy, it does have a good feel being up here. It's strange though, the way we're kind of perched up looking out over the traffic and the highway here. Yeah, it's a great view. But again, this is kind of, this is kind of interesting here because this is where the, this is where the hoses that's correct. Would have been. What happened to the hoses? Well, we have them stored. They're rolled up in, in, uh, in the container that you saw downstairs there on a the shelf. Uh -huh. So when we recondition these hose reels, uh, then the hose will go back on them when we get uh, somewhere along the line. Well, we'll you've got a little banner up here. Preserve Fireboat Number 2, the Ralph J. Scott LAFD Historical Society. Let's again remind everybody this is this still a National Historic Landmark? Yes, it is. Uh, even though it's out of the water, even correct. though it's decommissioned. No, that's uh, as long as we abide by the rules that the uh, Department of Interior and the National Park Service uh, put out for this, everything will be fine. Now, if we were to do something like cut a hole in the side of the vessel and, um, uh, you know, it would no longer be able to go in the water, so to speak, then we would probably lose that uh, But status. she is still technically Absolutely. a National Historic Landmark. That's correct. It's been since 1989. And that's important to the Los Angeles Fire Department. Very isn't important. It? It's important to our department and uh, uh, the citizens and people of L.A. and especially the people here in San Pedro where this boat served its whole career. Yeah, and what kind of comment are you getting from people? Let's stand right over here because this is interesting. I would imagine you have comments from people who drive up and down yeah, the... They do. They, they see it. What street is this? It's Harbor Boulevard. Uh -huh. People driving down Harbor Boulevard, of course, see the boat and they ask questions like, what's the boat doing there? And then what are you going to do with the boat? But they, it's very visible. Matter of fact, we were thinking about putting covers on it to help keep the paint down and the rust. Uh -huh. And uh, most of the people say, please don't cover it because it's a beautiful sight just where it's sitting right now. It's just like so many things, you don't really know what you have until you lose it. That's and right. they were used to seeing it in the water. Boy, look at the size of this oh, yeah. cargo container, container ship, ship container that's going ship. by. There going is right so back. much to see when you come down here. Now that's a big boat. Yeah, it is. It's a huge boat. And as a matter of fact, it's going right down here at China Shipping. Uh, there's even bigger container ships that are in the Otter Harbor uh, part where they, where they come in and car even carry more containers than that. Wow. Well, she looks, you know, for a, a ship that's, has she been technically been decommissioned? Well, it is no longer um, uh, a, an active fireboat in that respect. It's a decommissioning. But uh, as a uh, site that you see it right here, it's, uh, it's got a new life. It's a new life coming, hopefully. Bill's found the key to the, the master key to the pilot house, which is where you spent a lot of time in here. That's the truth. 16 years, this was my home. Now, this and doesn't look that old. Well, it isn't. Uh, this is a result of a uh, remodeling that occurred in 1969. Originally in here, you had a big spoked steering wheel, and all of the engine operations went by engine room telegraph. Yeah. You would signal down, and they would do whatever they needed to do. But in 69, we got uh, single lever control of the rudder and our three propulsion engines. We have control of those. So you modernized in 69, That's and it's correct. been like this from 69 till when she retired in 2004. 2004. Wow. Yeah.
How do you feel being standing back here? Uh, I love it. <laughs> it really is a neat thing to, to be part of this machine. You, you think of the expense of it and what it is, and uh, nine engines and three propellers and six pumps, and then you you got uh, control of a hundred feet of wrought iron here. Yeah. Uh, it really is a tremendous sensation, and I enjoyed every second of you it. You also are overwhelmed with the sense of the number of personal stories connected with just this space right here. Well, that's true. There's a lot of things that uh, happened over the years, that's for sure. Okay, as our adventure continues, we've left the old Ralph J. Scott. We've come inside the boathouse, and look what we've got here something very new and very big. And to tell us about it is first mate Derek Laduff. You are the first mate here. Yes, I am. So you know about this boat. A little bit about it, sure. Give us some <laughs> facts and figures because just at first glance, I've been in here when the old Ralph J. Scott was here. Mm -hmm. This takes up a lot more room. Yeah, it does. It's a lot wider and it's 105 feet, not much longer but uh, a lot more powerful than the Ralph J. Scott. Now, what are you talking about powerful? Well, the amount of water it can pump out? The amount out? of water it can pump out is more than twice the amount that the Ralph J. Scott really? could put out. Yeah, 38,000 gallons a minute this boat can pump. It's now, the most powerful fire boat in the world. I was going to say, doesn't this hold a record? Yes, it does, yeah. The most powerful fire boat in the world. As far as gallons a minute are concerned, yes, yeah. Wow. So this is like, you've got to have people visiting here from all over the world just to see this boat. Every day we give tours on the weekends. We're busy during the week uh, showing the boat off to anybody that comes by. It's uh, the showpiece of the harbor. Yeah, but you've also probably got to have engineers and firefighters from all over the country wanting to see this boat too. Yeah, we've given tours to people from all over the country and all over the world. They're interested in seeing the this is the biggest and most powerful boat in the world. So the fire department is proud of this new boat. This is our baby. All yeah. right, this is the baby and it's named the Warner L. Lawrence. What's that all about? Well, Warner Lawrence was uh, one of our most famous uh, captains on the fire department in the harbor. He worked his whole career in the harbor. Matter of fact, he was even a hard hat diver. We had hard hat divers in the 1930s. He was a hard hat diver uh, working off the Ralph J. Scott. Uh, his name is on the boat because of his uh, efforts to maintain our fire protection capability in the harbor. And matter of fact, he was mostly responsible for upgrading the Ralph J. Scott uh, back in 1969 and actually saved the boat because they were thinking about designing a new boat. So it was going to be taken out of service in 1969. That's correct. And That's Mr. Lawrence, who the new boat is named after, right was responsible for saving her back yeah, then. Yeah, he's a great guy. He was a great guy. That's a great name. It was is. there any competition? There was. We had a contest to uh, to determine which name would go on this boat. It is Spire Boat 2, but it's also the Warner Lawrence. He won hands down. He was wow. a terrific man. Now, we've heard all the facts and figures about how much this can pump, how bright and how shiny and how big, how fast. That's true. But you know what? <laughs> you Listen, and I are sitting here looking at this. Uh, I'll tell you, this is a fantastic piece of uh, marine firefighting equipment. It really is. There's nothing like it in the world. That is the truth. But just like uh, the Ralph J. Scott, it will have to prove itself just as time goes on and its history will be made uh, one step at a time. And, yeah, and it's kind of... I don't know. You can't really go out on a limb and say anything, but, but in a way, it's a totally different feel from the old Ralph J. Scott. Well, yes, it is. And after all, uh, it was 78 years old, it was retired, um, and served all those years very, very successfully. But this is a new era. Things are bigger. Uh, the, the hazards are greater. And this will have a, a tremendous uh, impact on any type of uh, disaster that should befall this port. It's, yeah. a, it's a fantastic uh, fireboat, absolutely. Well, it is the biggest and it is the best, but uh, I'm not sure anything can totally replace <laughs> the Ralph J. Scott. It's not in here. Not in here. <laughs> okay, as we end up, this is the perfect place to do it too with the, what is this going by right back here? Well, that's one of the Crowley tugs actually. They, they 
tie up right here and go out to help the big ships when they're coming in going Boy, out. There's a lot of action oh, going on over Harbor's here. Harbor's a wonderful it? exciting place. Well this is we're right outside uh, the boathouse here and we've come out here because we visited the old Ralph J. Scott. We've been to the new boat inside the boathouse and now it's time to kind of talk a little bit about the future and our dreams and our hopes and what's going to happen to the wonderful old Ralph J. Scott, which is just right over there in that parking lot. What, what, are you, what are your hopes for it? Well, our historical society would like to see the Ralph J. Scott uh, rehabilitated. Uh, you saw what it looked like up there, and it needs some work, that's for sure. And uh, m turn it into a museum uh, class uh, item that could be stored in a building right out here in this area for uh, forever for the, the people of this city to enjoy. After all, it's their boat. It belongs to the citizens of this city. They paid for it and kept it in action for 78 years. Nothing has served longer in terms of fire protection equipment than this fire boat. Now, how, how does this work? Where is this museum gonna be? Isn't it just right? It's gonna be proposed to be Right here? Right in this area here. Actually, the, there's a huge plan. The Port of LA has a huge plan to upgrade the whole waterfront. And it's called Bridge to the Breakwater. And they actually started the cruise terminal. They're working this way. They're actually, the plan is to cut this back, this land back in, mm -hmm. and put more docks out here for historic vessels. And then put our great Ralph J. Scott in its own museum in a building right wow. here in this spot. It'll be fabulous. Now, how realistic is this? I don't want you to get my hopes all up for something that's never going to happen. Sometimes it takes the government a while to get moving on these big plans. It's true. It might be a three to six year project. It could possibly be that long. But there was just a report made to the Harbor Commission. They talked about it and the Ralph J. Scott's in the top priority of all Where's of Where's the money coming from? Well, the port's going to provide some of the funds and we're going to have to raise, the historical side of the fire department's going to have to raise the funds to rehabilitate the vessel. All that rust, all the paint, everything that's going to bring it up to speed and make it look shiny and pretty. I we have to raise that. I would think you're probably going to have a lot of volunteer hours from firefighters to do that work as well, aren't you? We are hoping that they'll come out and, and help us. But we'll take volunteers from anywhere. Anybody that's interested in, in upgrading our uh, this beautiful historic vessel, bring them on. We'll, we'd love to have them. And this museum, will it just be for the fire boat or will it, is it going to be a, a bigger of, uh, cover more? I, I envision it telling uh, about the whole business of waterfront firefighting and, uh, and we will have something about fire boats from all over the world. Uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunities uh, to show and teach a lot of things that people don't know about wh how you fight uh, the rust and how you fight uh, uh, other types of things that happen to vessels in the water. Will people be able to climb on board and, and investigate? Well, yeah, they're going to be able to see it for one from all levels, from the whole level like we looked at it today, mm -hmm. uh, all the way up to the top of the tower. Uh, we're also going to allow visitors to come on board, special tours to come on board and actually go, go below and look at the engine room, which is a spectacular thing to see. Wow, this is exciting. Is this is a great plan. This it, is a great idea. It is for a fact. Uh, it's going to happen. I feel it. Well, i got to be honest with you. If I had my vote, I would vote that the old Ralph J. Scott was still in service and still out you know, all the waterways. But second to that, if she's going to have to be brought out of the water, I'm glad that there's going to be a use for her in her future life that's going to allow future generations to see her and touch her and tour her and understand just how special a role she played in fireboat history. I can see right now you're going to be one of the volunteers, John. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be down here. It couldn't have been said better, really. You, you said it just like we wanted to be. People from time now, from, from on, generations to come, can come see that great vessel. Wow, that's great. Well, she's yeah. out of the water, but she's still holding in there, the old Ralph J. Scott. She's still a national historic landmark right down here in San Pedro. You can come down and visit the boathouse and look in the windows there and see the new fire boat and you can stand out in front right off the street and again this street is Harbor Boulevard Harbor Boulevard right. and see the old Ralph J Scott so you get two for one mm -hmm. if you come down here to this part of the waterfront in San Pedro both of these fire boats very much a part of the history of the Los Angeles Fire Department both of them very special boats in our memories 
in our minds in Los Angeles history. It's all here, it right here on the waterfront. The adventure never stops because now we've come almost directly across the street from the two fireboats we just visited and we're standing in front of the old San Pedro City Hall, the old municipal building built back in 1928 and there's something inside this building directly connected with the Los Angeles Fire Department that's well worth a visit. We're going inside to take a look around right now. Come on, fellas. We are now inside the museum, and Frank, technically, where are we right now? Well, this is the Los Angeles Fire Department Harbor Museum, and it's run by our Historical Society. The Historical Society, and we are blocking the first exhibit because we want to make a big deal out of revealing it. Let's That's step right. out of the way, fellas, because, boy, this is your... This is quite, makes quite a statement when you walk in. What are we looking at right here? This is a beautiful 1948 Buick, and it represents the fire chief's car of 1948. So the chief would be riding around San Pedro in this car. This beautiful Can car. Can I open up this? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. There's the city of Los Angeles emblem on the side. Fully restored. It's got a good sound to Don't it. Don't make them like that anymore. All right, here's the fire chief's car right here. And here is, this boy, is, this really makes a statement right here. This is it. This is the original Engine 36. Came here when the station opened in 1928. Uh, wow. It's a 1923 Seagrave uh, pump. Wow. That's here when the station opened. How did you, did they hold on to this all these well, years? Well, uh, one of our uh, friends actually found this old fire truck in Nevada. It was a rusting piece of steel and restored it, and we're in the process of purchasing it from him. He re fully restored the vehicle. Does this thing still run? Do you it, take it out for parades? It runs, it pumps, it does everything. It's like brand new. Well, you've got other pieces of fire equipment in here. This is kind of a general museum, isn't it? You've got a little bit of everything in we here. We do. We focus on, on harbor fire protection. I'll just give you an example. This, this foam, fire, foam rig, we call it, actually came from a station in the valley, but it came down to the fire at the San Sanina ship explosion and pumped foam for hours and hours on that, on so that fire. So this would have been down in the harbor as well. It was. And right over here, this is interesting, over here you've got a whole little corner set aside to fireboat memorabilia. I love all of this brass and the metal down here. You've really got it set up well. We do. This is just a small portion. Of course, we'll expand this out when we get more uh, materials, but those are some of the big nozzles from the fireboat. There's a couple. There's the biggest nozzle right there from the Ralph J. Scott over in that corner. Wow. But it features uh, all of our activities in the harbor, mainly fireboats, a, a diver suit. Back in the 1930s, we actually had hard hat divers on the fire department. Right here. Yeah, that's the suit. Matter of fact, the helmet is actually being used on, on a diving uh, uh, show. It's being actually, it was taken off that stand over there. Wow. Well, you've got a little bit of everything in here, Bill. That's the truth. Where did all this stuff come from? A bunch of old firefighters clean out their attics and garages or what? Believe it or not, a little bit of that and a little bit of what we have at our museum in Hollywood and it spilled over into this particular area. Uh, I should mention that this was old fire station 36 in the early days and uh, I was assigned here back in 1954. As a, in those days, this bay that you see over here was a, a, a bay where we had more equipment running in and out of here. But so this that. was actually a fire station oh, right here in this correct. building. So that's it's correct. highly appropriate that the museum be here now. That is absolutely right. Now we did lose the second floor where they had the uh, sleeping quarters and rec room and so forth. But uh, we've made a really dandy little museum out of this place with a lot of very interesting exhibits. Been very fortunate. Well, what's the deal? When is this thing open so people can come by and look at it? Because, boy, there is a lot. These are the old-fashioned fire extinguishers, aren't well, they? Are they would grenades are actually glass with a chemical, carbon tetrachloride in them, which is an outlawed uh, chemical at this point. But those were used at the turn of the century. And actually, you would throw those 
at the base of the fire, or those who would like to be extinguisher that have been hanging on the wall and would break and the it. the heat would make them break. That's right. Very wow. unusual. Very rare. you got a lot of neat stuff in here. Do. How do people get in here to see this? Well, we're open on Saturdays from 10, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and uh, So it's only five hours a week, and yeah. these are volunteer docents. Right. You're probably down docents. here a lot. I am. I live in San Pedro, so I like coming down here, but we use uh, volunteer docents to take people on tours through the museum. It's a great little museum. Well, it's a small museum, but there's a lot of neat stuff to see here. And again, it ties all in with the fire boats right across the street. The Maritime Museum is right across the street. This area of San Pedro is full of things for people to see and do with their families. It truly is a great place to spend a Saturday for sure and other days of the week. And when we get more volunteer docents, we'll be open many more days than just Saturday. Bill, come on over here because let me officially thank you all for an absolutely wonderful yeah, day. I think you. we've all seen thank a you. lot and had a great time down here in San Pedro. I always have a good time in San Pedro, but I highly recommend that you come down and not only see the two boats across the street, but on Saturdays from 10 to 3, come by and visit this wonderful firefighting museum right here in the old building that was built in 1928. Before we leave, we got one more thing to look at. Now this is a picture of an old fireboat. Yes it is. This is old fireboat one built in 1919 and it's the first actual full pumping fireboat. This was have. before the Ralph J. Scott. That's correct. And you've got something here in the museum from that old fireboat that definitely makes a statement. What are we looking at? This is the foghorn that they used when they went out in the fog to get around and warn people where they were and, and what they were up to. All right, let's hear it. This is the way we're ending the show right here. That definitely makes a statement. <laughs> you can hear that a few miles away. And I they think. would have been doing this on the fireboat well, out well, in the harbor. Absolutely. This was the actual one off of that boat. One more time. One more time. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and that's the way it is at the Fire Museum in San Pedro. <laughs> Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.